Instead of mullet Monday. Yes. You're gonna twist it up a little bit. I yes, see. absolutely. I get that uh, all right, let's let, let's talk some baseball here. Gary Sheffield had some pointed comments in an interview where he said he no longer watches baseball, that he doesn't watch baseball at all. Direct quote from him. And he says the reason he doesn't watch baseball is because they've changed the rules so much. And that he doesn't like the fact that guys are swinging for the fences, that there's no longer uh, basically station to station baseball. It's, it's boring to watch guys go up there and strike out 180, 190 times. And, you know, that, that there are so many home runs now that it's not a thing. Like in the days when I was playing, <laughs> here comes Jeremy's old man voice, back in my day when the... <laughs> when, the, when you hit a home run, everybody, it was a thing because it didn't happen very often. So now he's saying, oh, you know, everybody hits home runs and it's not a special uh, event anymore when somebody hits a home run. So what this is, is basically your 95-year-old grandpa complaining about adding the three-point line to the basketball court. Essentially. It, it, okay, so the game has been so different for so long now. It's integrated into the game and you're still complaining about this. The home run mm -hmm. is a part of Major League Baseball now. And, and also, this is coming from a guy with the most exaggerated swing. I mean, it was entertaining as a kid to watch. I remember when he first checked into Atlanta, and you know, I was already a big fan of, of Gary coming out mm -hmm. of New York with okay. the swinging the bat like he's chopping right. mat, chopping <laughs> axe. I'm like, I, I remember one of my high school baseball coaches. I, I tried to do that at the plate, and he he immediately pulled me. He's like, <laughs> "What are you, are you, Gary Sheffield? Right? No, you're not. So don't do that. You need to make sure you get the bat turned around as quickly as possible." Mm -hmm. And that was Gary's thing. He was able to get that bat speed up even with the ridiculously slow axe chopping motion. Right. But so exaggerated. It was all about the attention for Gary Sheffield. It was all about hitting home runs and being the showman. Mm -hmm. And now he has the audacity to turn around and criticize what's become an incredibly, incredibly entertaining game because of uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., because of Juan Soto, who is unfortunately on the on the IL right now. I, mm -hmm. I came around to the Nationals after Bryce Harper left. After Bryce Harper became a Philly, I found myself no longer hating Washington, Washington with the same okay. intensity that I did. Right. Uh, so it's kind of fun to watch, to watch Juan Soto hit 500, uh, 500 foot bombs now, but is it not entertaining? Are you not entertained? Right? I am entertained. I am fully I am. entertained by entertained. baseball right now, and maybe that's just because my team's doing really well to start out the season, and uh, you know, I, I get trapped in this, you, you know, baseball has always been America's game. It's always been America's pastime since I've been born. And, you know, I can't remember who whose quote it was, but somebody had a great quote one time that said, uh, you know, America or baseball is America's pastime, but football is America's passion. Sure. And I've always gone down that. It, it, uh, it, you know, baseball will always be America's true first love as a sport. Mm hmm. Times change, and, if, and the NFL is taking over, and we get it. That's why we talk a lot of NFL on this show all the time because the ratings are fantastic. People are paying attention. It's a year-round sport now, with uh, you know the run-up to the draft, and then free agency, and it, it, you don't really get a break anymore in the NFL world. But baseball is still there, and. I think we're starting to see at least some kind of a trend. Not, it's never going to be back to its heyday because you're never going to get a lot of younger audience to buy into baseball because honestly, it is boring at times. But I'll be frank with you, uh, Gary Sheffield, it was boring when you played too. It wasn't like, you know, every game was just this, uh, you know, this perfect station to station baseball. Everybody's putting the bat on the ball. and. It, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It, it, baseball is not, uh, it, what's, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. Baseball is, uh, it is just as entertaining today as it was years ago. You just have to invest yourself in the game. So baseball is, there are a lot of rules. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot mm -hmm. of old rules that frankly don't make a lot of sense in modern technology. We have robot umpires, and we're going to talk about that later on in the show, how mm -hmm. that's becoming a part of the game. We have them, 
but baseball chooses not to use them because mm -hmm. the human element is still very much a part of that game. But to give Gary Sheffield a little bit of credit to his point, he's making the same points that Tim Anderson has made in the past out of Chicago. This kid is what, I think he's 24, maybe 25 years old, mm -hmm. and he has said that he doesn't watch baseball. He plays mm -hmm. it because it's a ton of fun, he has a hell of a good time doing it, but he doesn't watch it because he's bored by it. And that's, you know, that, that goes to him trying to elevate the black community mm -hmm. and get more, you know, minority players mm -hmm. into the game, and I understand all of that, but it kind of, to stick with the gladiator theme, the NFL is, is the modern day coliseum. I mean, this is what we send our warriors into. This is where right. we send our gladiators into battle. It was, it was hugely popular 2,000 years ago. It's still widely popular in America today, but baseball is a different kind of game, and I think that's mm -hmm. what people need to understand. Football is marketed to a widely different audience. Mm -hmm. Baseball has become more of a niche market, but you know what? The, mm -hmm. the numbers are on the rise, and I can't compete with that. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, it's just it's trying to compare apples and oranges. It's mm -hmm. like you know, uh, trying to co uh, let's use cars for example. It's like trying and Jeremy picks on Kia, so I'll use Kia. It's like trying to compare Kia to a Maserati of football. Kia's never sponsoring us anyway. Talk all the shit about Kia. You want. <laughs> yeah, they haven't shelled out any money to be sponsors, so screw them. Uh, I saw one of their hamsters in here the other day, right, I think. Right. Uh, but, you know, baseball is the Kia in this scenario. Football is the Maserati. This one's more exciting. It's faster. It does a lot of things. The other one is just, you know, it's, uh, it's there. And there are times where you could have fun in a Kia, but, you know, usually you're, you know, running from somebody. Uh, <laughs> if you, I mean, how would have you ever had fun in IKEA? Who has ever had fun in IKEA? No, it's a it's a steady product. It'll get you to A and B. It's there for your enjoyment if you so choose. And that's kind of how I view baseball these days. Of, you know, it is it, it's a sport that you can you can check out of. You can check out of a 3-hour baseball game in the 3rd inning and not really miss a whole lot. You're going to miss some strikeouts. You're going to miss some outs. You know, maybe if your team has a couple on base, then you, you know, you're falling on your phone. You pull it back up on the TV to see if you score that inning. Football's not that way. Anything can happen at any moment in a football game. And Okay, so what was 16 games has now become a 17-game regular season mm -hmm. as compared to 162 games. Oh, yeah you know, supply and demand. You have less games, you have less of an opportunity to make an impact, and so every game carries more weight. That's not to say that each and every game on the MLB schedule doesn't matter, because, you know, as you saw with Boston, you crank off eight wins in a row, all mm -hmm. of a sudden you've got a gaping lead in your division. And oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a lead that they're probably going to hold. I mean, they, they should be able, you know, to at least last through July. I'm not sure if Boston actually makes it to the if they're actually able to ride it into the playoffs, they've still right. got a long way to go. And that is the beauty of baseball itself. Mm-hmm. We have a, we, it, there are different eras throughout the season. You've got the spring, you've got the summer, and you've got the postseason push. Three mm -hmm. chapters, and you've got, if you're going to win the World Series, you've got to be able to, to, you know, conquer all three of those individual sections of the year. And, you know, it's a long season. Part of Sheffield's comments were, uh, quote, baseball was exciting when I was playing. They've implemented all these rules now, and they've changed the game so much that they're making it more hitter-friendly, even without having success. These guys can go out there and strike out 180, 190 times, and it's okay. Uh, yeah, it is, it is okay. And I get that Gary Sheffield was not a, you know, he wasn't a strikeout guy. He's, he's one of the few guys in Major League Baseball, you can look at his stats, look back on it, and he walked more times than he struck out. Okay, that's, you know, I, I get it that's the way you were, but I mean, do we remember guys like, um, oh, I don't know, Brady Anderson. Brady Anderson was a guy that struck out a lot mm -hmm. in his day. In Baltimore. And, you know, Gary Sheffield, like it or not, Gary Sheffield will always be tied to the steroid era. He was big friends with Barry Bonds. He trained with Barry Bonds. And did he ever test positive for steroids? No, he didn't. But did we all think he was doing them? Yes, we did. All of us did. Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Gary Sheffield, Fred McGriff. When the home run numbers started going up in the late 90s, we all went, something's wrong here. Right? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, oh, when absolutely. Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds both did the transformation into Tom Brady, from Tom Brady bodies into Miles Garrett bodies, I mean, it wasn't that great, but you get what I I'm mean, saying. Close enough, though. Right, like when Mark McGuire shows up, uh, you know, for what it was like year five in Oakland and mm. the and the St. Louis days, and he's on the front of all the magazine covers. He's got those big Popeye forearms. Yeah. And you knew something was going on. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't care then, and I don't care now. Jason like John I said on the, the show way. yesterday, I don't give a shit if my players are, uh, you know, taking all of the drugs. As long as we're winning, to me, that's what it's all about. Well, and that's the offensive thing about what Gary Sheffield has said, honestly, because he talks about his era of baseball like it was the greatest, like it was the end-all, be-all in the history of MLB, and that's simply not true because the PEDs have, have, have shown that, that that's not to be true. We mm -hmm. can't count Mark, Mark McGuire and the great things that he did because it, wasn't, it was against the rules. Oh, no, we do. No, no, we count him. I count him. I mean, you may not you count him, but I count him. You, uh, it was great to watch, but you can't officially count that. No, I officially count him. No, well, I don't uh, officially <laughs> count him. Barry Bonds is not the home run leader to me because it was juiced. But, I mean, it's not, and again, it's not that it wasn't great to see. It was a really, really fun time to watch. Roger Clemens, the way that he was able to, I mean, the, the speeds that he was able to hit mm -hmm. were just phenomenal. But what we're watching right now is even better because we're seeing the greatest hitters to ever grace Major League Baseball in the Acunas, in the, you know, in the Juan Sotos of the world. But we're also seeing like Jacob, Jacob DeGrom, 14 strikeouts the other day, nine in a row. That's only one short of Tom Seaver's all-time record of, of 10 strikeouts in a row. It was right. phenomenal. I, right before we went on the air, I, I did mm -hmm. a quick recap. I watched all of those strikeouts, but and it's everything. He's, he's the precision accuracy and the way that he's able to maintain himself all the way through the eighth inning. He still mm -hmm. lost the game. Miami won that game three to nothing because he had zero run support. But the, the way that pitchers are able to maintain themselves now across the board is much, much better than anything we ever saw out of the 90s. Okay. You think the pitchers today are better than the pitchers from the 90s? By and large, for sure. I'm going to disagree. How so? I'm going to have to disagree. Hit I me. mean, you got to think about the guys that were hurling in the 90s. I mean, Early 90s, you had guys like Nolan Ryan. There ain't a pitcher in baseball today that could touch Nolan Ryan. Roger Clemens, Pedro Martinez. And Clemens juiced. I mean, yeah. I, of okay. Course. Okay, take yeah. Roger Clemens out of there. Uh, so you say Pedro. Pedro Martinez is one of the greatest of all time? Absolutely. You don't think so? I think he's. Maybe he's in the top ten. I might put him nine or ten. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, let, uh, I want to go down this path. I want, okay. I'll, you, where would you rank players from today in the all-time pantheon of uh, of pitchers in baseball? Like, where would Jacob Degrom I mean, be that's for a you right now? Broad question. Jacob Degrom in the all-time annals of pitchers. I put him uh, probably probably six on the list. Probably six. Mm -hmm. Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw is number five. Okay. No, Nolan Ryan is number one. All right. We've got to talk about. Uh, we've got to get Raleigh Fingers in there as well. Ooh, he's okay. probably going to be. He's going to be number nine on the list. Okay. All uh, right. I could imagine uh, that. Okay. So Max Randy Scherzer. Johnson. Randy Johnson is number two. The okay. big unit is number two on the list. Max Scherzer is deserving of one spot on the mm -hmm. list somewhere. Okay. All right. I'm just. I'm just curious. I, I mean, I know you're. I know you're a young guy. You were just. You were just a wee baby and not even thought of when some of these guys were even I came up through the 90s, played. though. I watched this great era of baseball. He was born in '95. But '94. He was born in 1994. I am 26 and a half. I came up in the 80s. Holy shit, about disco. Sure you do. You know more than you're willing to admit. Right. I've seen you break it down. Look, I. I don't think so. I. I mean, I think. All-time great players from from back in the day. I mean, even you think about Pedro Martinez mm. pitching during the steroid era, and he was still dominant. I mean, absolutely. Uh, to me, that uh, that gives him a little check mark up. Yeah, but you're a Boston Red Sox in that fan. scenario. Well, I mean, not one pitcher that I mentioned came from Atlanta. Except for uh, well, I mean, well, you, could yeah, you, you could, could have. You could have Greg Negro. Maddox. You could have gone John yeah. Smoltz. You could have. I mean, yeah, the the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, you know, I just think it's different eras of baseball, but by no means do I feel like this era is head and shoulders above the past eras, especially not when it comes to the hitters. Because I will give Gary Sheffield one thing. I think that was the one true thing that he did say. There were better hitters in the 90s. I mean, you think about career 
professional hitters. Like Tony Gwynn. Sure. Ricky uh, there's not a Tony Gwynn in baseball today. To me. A guy that goes out there and will mash every day and will be able to put it where he just wants to. What about you? I don't think those guys still exist. You don't think Tatis is a, is a fair comp to Tony no, Gwynn? No, I really don't. I mean, I, I mean, he's got a lot of power. He's got, you know, I think he's a good hitter. I'm not saying he's a bad hitter, but what I'm saying is you don't have guys that you got, you got so many guys that go out there and look for the long ball that yeah, you do have an uptick in strikeouts. You got more guys swinging for the fences because they know that's what's going to earn them millions of dollars. Back in the day, there was more of a, a focus on station to station baseball. What do we need right now? We don't need a home run right now. What we need is we got a guy on third. I need to hit this one through the gap on the right side of the field and drive that run in. And you had more guys back then that could do that. Paul Molitor comes to mind. He was a guy, he never did anything real fantastic other than just put the ball where they ain't. I mean, that's rule and number so, one. I don't know. I don't think that there's a leg up, but although I will say this, that today's pitchers, by and large, I think there are more of them that throw harder mm -hmm. than there were back in the 90s because you didn't, you didn't have to. You know, it's more of a finesse kind of a game. If you're a starter now, you have to hit triple digits. Oh, yeah. You have to hit 100 with your fastball. And there's that, no and, way around and it. And see, that's just part of the, the excitement factor as we get more and more evolved, quote unquote, as a society. And, you know, chicks dig the long ball. Chicks dig the fastball, too. You know, 102 mile an hour fastballs are things that will keep people watching just to see, can he break 103? Can he get the 104? Whatever. The thing that baseball... I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's more skill in the game today than there was back then. I think the skill was greater back then, but today...